These four unmanned ships are among the newest additions to the U.S. Navy. Meet Sea Hunter, Sea Hawk, Nomad, and Ranger. This summer, the Navy gave VOA special access to photograph them for the first time. There is no water. There are no toilets. They are only meant to be driven in and out of port by a human for obvious safety reasons. U.S. Naval Commander Jeremiah Daly, permitted to give VOA an audio-only interview, leads the first division made up of remotely operated ships or drone boats. Daly says these unmanned vessels currently being piloted could one day enable the Navy to better patrol the vast 165 million square kilometers of the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific is, is a large body of water and having the right combination of unmanned systems that can sense the environment with manned systems only widens the aperture for the level of um, targeting and connectedness capability that not only the U.S. but our partners can have together with us. Japan, Singapore, South Korea and China all have programs to develop driverless ships. Former top Pentagon Asia official Randy Shriver says drone boats are critical to maintain a free and open Indo-Pacific in the face of an expanding and assertive Chinese military. The spaces that are contested are certainly growing, and I think uh, autonomous or unmanned vehicles, either submerged or on the surface, are cheaper. Um, they're more expendable in, in terms of not uh, risking the lives of sailors. But a U.S. government report released in July raises concerns about whether the Navy understands the logistics support required for these vessels. Others, such as James Siebens, a defense strategy fellow at the Stimson Center, worry that these ships could make a more attractive military target. China, for one, might regard an unmanned vessel as a less escalatory target to test out an uh, anti-ship missile. Sieben says that despite those concerns, driverless ships could be critical in responding to a Chinese blockade of Taiwan. They might be able to help resupply Taiwan without putting U.S. service uh, personnel in harm's way. In its just-released white paper, Beijing no longer promises it will not send troops to Taiwan in a potential takeover. Shriver insists that the U.S. must invest in new tools to maintain peace across the most important waterways in the world. But we also at this point need to think about how we can deny the adversary their political objectives through use of force, and right now that means adding capability, not subtracting. Commander Daly says the unmanned surface vehicles should be fully integrated into the U.S. military in the next few years. Jessica Stone, VOA News, Washington.